Welcome to the FACE CTS Learning Series, Chapter 2, Environment Setup and Installation on CentOS 7 and Windows 10, Video 3, Prerequisite Setup for CentOS 7. In this video, we will download, install, and configure prerequisites for the installation of the CTS, launch of the CTS, and testing of FACE UOCs within the CTS. For the installation of CentOS, we are using the x86 64 DVD ISO on VirtualBox. The ISO file is found on centos.org download. When creating this virtual machine, we used Genome Desktop and selected Genome Applications, Office Suite and Productivity, Compatibility Libraries, Development Tools, Security Tools, and System Administration Tools. To successfully install the CTS, the required prerequisites include Python 2.7 with Zlib and setup tools, Google Protocol Buffers version 2.6.0, Java 1.8 JDK, and a PDF viewer. To successfully test UOCs within the CTS, there are dependencies for each language the UOC is written in. In this video, we will show how to install each of these dependencies. For UOCs written in C, GCC version 4.8 or higher is required. For UOCs written in C++, G++ version 4.8 or higher is required. For UOCs written in ADA, GNAT for GCC version 4.8 or higher is required. For UOCs written in Java, Java 1.8, Linux Alternatives Package, Ant 1.9.0 or higher, and Qt 5.2.1 are required. It is suggested that any browser be installed when installing the Java JDK, as you must accept a license agreement before downloading. Note, if you are only testing UOCs written in a particular language, for example, C++, you only need to install the dependencies required for that UOC language. In the C++ example, you would only need to install G++ to successfully test C++ UOCs. Throughout this video, we will track the status of prerequisite configuration and installation within the checklists. A check mark denotes a completed dependency installation and configuration. A yellow dot denotes the installation and configuration is currently in progress. I have added the CTS that was downloaded in previous videos into my home directory. In my case, I have named my CentOS user CTS user. First, install the dependencies for testing UOCs for C, C++, and ADA by executing sudo yum install gcc, gcc-c++, and gcc-gnat. This is necessary for testing C, C++, and ADA projects but is also necessary for building and installing the Google Protocol Buffers library. This command will also install required dependencies for GCC, GCC-C++, and GCC-GNAT packages. Python 2.7 is installed by default by CentOS 7, and thus, we don't have to do anything. To install Google Protocol Buffers, it must be downloaded from the public GitHub at github.com slash google slash protobuf slash releases slash tag slash v2.6.0, or it may be downloaded by the command prompt using the on-screen command. Protocol Buffers is a third-party library used to define, read, and write the format of messages between the CTS backend, which is written in Python, CTS frontend, which is written in Java, and the project and toolchain configuration files. It is also used to define the message format for messages between the backends DMVT slash DAVT and the USM IDL generator, or DIG. After successful download, we must unzip, enter the folder, and execute the dot slash configure command. Once finished configuring, we must execute make and then install via root user by executing sudo make install. Finally, we must add the shared libraries folder to the search path as the root user and reload the cache of the dynamically linked libraries 
so protocol buffers can be used by all members of the machine that it is being installed on. This can be achieved by executing sudo su, adding the local configuration to the location of the libraries with the on-screen command, and executing exit. Now, you may reload the command prompt's environment variables via sudo ldconfig. Now, Google Protocol Buffers has been successfully installed. To install the Java 8 JDK, it is recommended to install via the Oracle website via any browser. I have decided to use Firefox as our browser. Firefox includes an in-browser PDF viewer and thus satisfies the requirement for a PDF viewer. It is recommended to download the Linux x64 RPM file for Java 8. At the time of recording, the latest Java 8 version is 271, but the latest version of Java 8 when this video is viewed may be different. After downloading, navigate to the download location. Then, install with the command sudo yum install, and then the name of the RPM file. It is recommended to register the Java installation with the Alternatives package. The Alternatives package is already installed, as it came with our installation of CentOS 7. Alternatives registers alternative versions of the same software. It is important to register both Java, which is used to execute Java bytecode, and Java C, which is used to compile Java. This can be done by entering the shown commands. If we execute sudo alternatives dash dash config java, we should see and be able to select a version of Java installed on our system. It is important to select the Java 8 JDK and not the Java 8 Open JDK, as the Open JDK does not include Java FX, which is used for the CTS's front end. If we execute sudo alternatives dash dash config java c, we should see a selection that corresponds to our Java 8 compiler. To install ant, all that needs to be executed is sudo yum install ant. You may download Qt with the shown command. Then, execute the following commands to start the installer. When prompted by the installer for the install directory, enter slash opt slash qt 5.2.1. At the end of installation, we will be prompted with an interface informing us of success. Thank you for watching. This concludes the installation and prerequisites for the successful execution and testing of FACE UOCs in the CTS version 3.1.0 on CentOS 7. In this video, we have installed and configured all prerequisites for the FACE Conformance Test Suite 3.1.0. In the next video, environment setup, including setup of environment variables, execution of CTS binaries, and successful execution of the CTS will be demonstrated.